What's you guys? Alex Chase in the back here with a brand new video. Hopefully, you have a great day, afternoon, night. If you guys are in this world, sorry for the echo. I'm in the bathroom in my hotel room right now because everywhere else the lighting was just not working out and it was just really quiet and people would walk by and they could hear every word I was saying. Just really awkward. So I came into the bathroom and also the best lighting in here today. Look at this. That's some beautiful lighting right there. So I, I'm in New York City, but we're in Brooklyn. So you know, it's all kind of the same thing, just over the Brooklyn Bridge. And I'm here for the NBA draft, like I stated in yesterday's video. I'm so excited. And here is my 2019 NBA mock draft, but it's only the lottery. I'm not doing one through 60, because we'd be here for a very long time, and I doubt you guys want to sit through that. So we're doing the most important part of the draft, which is the lottery. So I got picks one through 14. And um, yeah, let's get started with this. The top three picks, I don't even have to say them, but I'm gonna say them anyways for the purpose of the video. But you guys already know who it is. The first pick in the 2019 NBA draft to the New Orleans Pelicans is gonna be Zion Williamson. That was not a surprise there. Zion Williamson looks has the most potential going to the NBA in this year's draft. Now, I think he's a little overrated. I have to see what he actually does on the court in the NBA. Yes, I do think he'll be a very solid player, but the hype of being LeBron, the next Jordan, blah, 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 all those different hypes surrounding him, I think it might not make him crumble, but I don't think he's going to reach, ever reach that potential. They'll never be a next Michael Jordan. They'll never be a next LeBron. They'll be a next GOAT of an error, but they'll never be a next LeBron or Michael Jordan. Those are separate types of people. So I hate when people compare someone coming into the NBA, that they're going to be like the next Michael Jordan. Like LeBron's not Michael Jordan. They're two different goats of each era. So I just hate when people do that. So I don't really, not that I don't believe in him. I believe in him. I think he's going to be a very solid player. But I don't know if he'll ever reach that potential, the, the, uh, not the potential, but like the pressure people are putting into him. Well, he, could he surprise me completely? Could I, is he like the one player in the draft that I would expect to surprise me? Hell yeah, but I just want to make, see that happen. And uh, we'll see what he does. The second pick of the 2019 NBA Draft goes to John ja Morant. He'll be going to the Memphis Grizzlies. This is just a perfect pickup as I'm going to make another video on this. I'm not sure when I'll upload it. I'll probably upload it before this one. But John ja Morant is going to be part of Memphis. He'll be a starting point guard because Mike Conley just got traded to the Utah Jazz about like 30 minutes ago as we speak. And that was a real surprising I mean, it wasn't surprising. It was just more like the landing spot was surprising. I was thinking more like the Pacers or some team that really needs a point guard. The so Jazz have Ricky Rubio. Yeah, he's a free agent, so I guess they won't be re-signing him. But Ricky Rubio was a very, very solid um, point guard for them. He dishes the ball. He plays fantastic on-ball defense. And he's just an overall really solid point guard. But I guess the acquisition of Mike Conley makes them even better with uh, backcourt of, excuse me, of Mike Conley, uh, Mitchell and then a small forward, you might play Ingles. Uh, they don't really have like a stud small forward, but Ingles and then at the power forward, you say re sign favors and then go bear at the center. That's a really solid starting five, very, very offensive heavy. Then they have the fantastic low post defender and Rudy Gobert. So I think that would be a really good fit for uh, Mike Conley. Now I kind of sidetracked going back to John Morant in Memphis. That's a perfect. They're doing the youth movement. They got rid of the old guy, Mike Conley. They got rid of uh, Marcus Gasol last season. To, he traded them to the Rockers. So they're doing a perfect youth mo movement. They have a great young core now, Jaron Jackson Jr. And then John Morant. We'll see who else they, they uh, either draft or pick off in free agency, some younger guys, and or in future drafts to come. So they have a great youth movement going on. And I can't wait to see what they do five, ten years down the line. The third pick in this year's draft goes to the New York Knicks, and they're going to be selecting RJ Barrett with that third pick. Really no surprise here. We all thought it was going to be Zion going to the Knicks. RJ, you want to play for the Knicks? <laughs> that was Zion, what he said to RJ. And RJ said, yeah. Well, he didn't say yeah, but he's going to the Knicks. I don't see any other team that he's going to fall to. He'll definitely not go first or second, just based off what the other team needs are. And then he's definitely going to fall third to the Knicks, so they're not going to go up for They're not going to get someone else like Culver, Hunter. They're definitely going to get RJ. And he's a perfect fit here in New York. They need a small forward. So they'll be, they have a great young core. Like the, like Memphis is going for, the, the Knicks have a great young core to build on with uh, Dennis Smith Jr. at the point, Knox at the two, and then um three. Well, I guess RJ is more of a shooting guard. He can play. RJ can, is really like the... I see him as a Magic Johnson, if I'm going to make a comparison. Yeah, earlier in the video, I don't like... I said I don't like to make comparisons when it comes to goats, but I do like making comparisons for like, you know, not like goat goats. If that makes any sense, I know it's really hard to explain, but I see RJ Barrett's game and it really reminds me about like a Magic Johnson where he can play any position one through three and he can dish the ball out. So he could 
and come up with the court, but he also like not come up with the ball with the court and sit in the corner for a three. So I really, I really cannot wait to see what he does with the Knicks with Knox, Smith, Mitchell. He's going to be a fantastic young center and then RJ. So it looks like a really, really good youth movement going on here in New York. The fourth pick, we all know what happened here. Davis got traded to the Lakers. The Pelicans got the fourth pick from the Lakers. And with the fourth pick, the Pelicans will be selecting shooting guard Jarrett Culver. I say they're going to pick Jarrett Culver just because I think they're trying to do a youth movement. And they don't really need Drew Holiday. And I've heard he's up for trade. So obviously, they're going to try to move him probably before the trade deadline just to keep that youth movement going. Because if you have Lonzo Ball and then an L, he's not old. He's like 29, I think, with uh, Drew Holiday. And then you have the small forward. You have um, whoever's your, I'm blanking out right now, but then you have Zion at the five, and then whoever's your center, who I'm going to get to in a second, who I think they're a uh, young center. Actually, no, but I think, I don't really know. Wait, sorry, I had to re regroup there for a second. I was blanking out. But you have Jaheel Okafor, who's a solid young center. They have Cech Diallo, who's a power forward, but he could run the center position. He's really, really solid. I think he's very underrated in this league. I think he actually might produce, like, if he gets, like, the maximum minutes, he can, like, produce. What the hell is it? If he can play to his potential, that's what I'm trying to get at. I think he'd be a very efficient player in the NBA. So I'm really excited to see what Jared Culver can do with the Pelicans at shooting guard. And um, yeah, I cannot wait. Lonzo Ball, Jared Culver, and then uh, oh, Brand I'm stupid. Lonzo Ball, Jared Culver, Brandon Ingram, uh, and then Zion, whoever their center is. That's a great youth movement right there. And I cannot wait to see what those young guys do. Make fun of me. I actually make fun of me. I was so bad. I forgot about Brandon Ingram. Stupid. Um, and it was the fifth pick in this year's draft is going to be DeAndre Hunter. The Cavaliers are in very, 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 very big need of a future forward slash small forward. Because, you know, Kevin Lowe's on a big contract. That thing's going to end and he's going to be out of here. He might even request a trade before then. And they really kind of have a tough situation where, like, they have some young guys. They have some middle-aged guys that are, like, in their prime and they're not going to get any better. And then they have older guys that know what they're going to do, like Tristan Thompson, Kevin Love. So they kind of are, like, in a tough situation where they're rebuilding with also older guys in the team, which is, a, like I said, a tough situation to be in because you're not going to make the playoffs. Or if you do, do the eighth seed and get bounced in the first, second round if you're lucky. So they're kind of, like I said, a tough situation. So I think DeAndre Hunter is a perfect player to get to. Just keep keep that youth moving going with Colin Sexton. Be, the, the future looks perfect for them. They have Jordan Clarkson, another one of those guys who's just getting into their prime. Fantastic sixth man. He's like, could be that next Lou Will. So I cannot wait to see what that team does. The sixth pick. This could eat to, it, the sixth pick goes to the Suns. And I have two selections for this team. It could either be Kobe White or Darius Garland. I'm going to say Darius Garland based off the fact he's a little bit more of a passing point guard. And that's what the Suns need because they already have Devin Booker, who's a fantastic scorer. They have TJ Warren, who's a fantastic scorer. Power forward, they have Josh Jackson, or they could put TJ Warren there and swap those guys out. I guess Josh Jackson would be more of a small forward. And then they have um, DeAndre Ayton at the center. It's a really good youth team. And I cannot wait. I've said it so many times, but a lot of these young teams are up and coming. As the Spurs keep going out, as the Warriors start fading out, as the Lakers eventually fade out after they get started, start, keep start getting older, LeBron's older, and then AD, he's not going to be able to carry the Lakers himself from LeBron's out of there. All these teams that you think are fantastic, these teams that I'm talking about are up and coming, and they'll be the next Warriors winning three out of four championships. These guys right here, you're talking, talking about these youth guys, they're adding to these teams' potential. And it's really, really, the NBA is looking fantastic. Its future is looking wonderful. And then at the seventh pick, the Chicago Bulls, this could either be Darius Garland or Kobe White, like I stated before. I'm going to say the Bulls are going to get Kobe White. He's a little bit more of what the Bulls need. He's kind of like a Chris Dunn, but a little bit better at scoring the ball. They're both very tall point guards. Kobe White's like 6'5", 6'6". Chris Dunn's like 6'3", 6'4". So they're relatively tall point guards. So I think that looks... I think that's a really, really good pickup for the Bulls because Kobe White can shoot the ball. He's a solid passer. He needs to work on that a little bit. I think only think he had like four assists a game, maybe bump that up to eight just to be like a really, really efficient point guard. Four as a point guard is pretty good, but like if you want to be like a really, really good point guard, like next level to get the ball to the next level, you got to be getting like eight assists, be like a Rondo or something. The Hawks will have the eighth pick, and they're going to be selecting Cam Reddish. I think Cam Reddish is one of the under, most underrated players in this draft. He's a fantastic shooter. He's a very he's a good spot up shooter. He can also create his own shot. Yeah, he was in the shadows of RJ and Zion, but like I said, he can create his own shot. He can he can do whatever he wants. He's one of those guys that will fit in any system. So any team that selects him, 
I'd honestly be happy with and he'll thrive in, but I think the Hawks would be a perfect situation because they're also one of those teams that's in the youth movement, but they're already like stepping up. Like last year, they had a relatively good season for the Hawks. So they got Trey Young, they'll have uh, Cam Reddish, they have John Collins, they have a whole selection of young guys, Kevin Herter, they have a whole selection of solid, solid players that are gonna keep growing. You know, Trey Young's like he could be like a really, 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 really good point guard, like uh, MVP level point guard in the next five years. So I cannot wait to see what he does, and I cannot wait to see what Cam Reddish and the Hawks do. Now the Wizards, they're going to be selecting the foreign players, Sekou, Bambayou, something like that, Dubayou. Uh, he plays in France, I'm pretty sure, and he's a forward. And the Wizards are like another one of those teams in a very tough situation. John Wall's going to be out all next year, could miss a little bit more than that because he tore his Achilles and also broke his foot. Rough, rough stuff. And then Bradley Beal, you don't know what's going to happen with him. He might request a trade because he might want to get out of there. So the Wizards are in a very tough situation. They might want to call up the youth movement and get that on the phone and then start the whole rebuild process because they're not, they're not going to contend with what they have right now. They're in the mix. They're, they have a mix of older players, they are middle aged players, not really too many young, young players. So they're a tough situation. So I think Sekou Dumbayo is a, taking a chance, but I think he could, if he produces or gets to the level he people think he can he could be a very good fit in washington and maybe him and bradley beal be the next like big two and then they sign someone i don't know five years that's just like a big stretch but you never know the 10th picks is the hawks they have two lottery picks good for them jackson hayes center um i think he's gonna be a really good center he's one of the more older centers you're gonna see in this draft he's not like a bull bull where he can stretch the floor shoot a three He's more of like a grit and grind center, get in the paint, rebound, score in the low post. I kind of like that. The Hawks, they could use that because they, they already have a lot of athleticism with John Collins at their power forward position. They could use someone that doesn't really need to stretch the floor and they can really get the boards for them and score in the low post. I think it'll be a very, very good fit with the Hawks. And the Wolves at 11, they're going to be selecting, they're gonna be selecting Rui Hachibor at power forward. Um... Rui is one of those guys that I never really watched a lot, surprisingly, out of all the basketball I watched. I never really watched Gonzaga, but from the highlights I see, he's one of the most NBA-ready players I can see in the draft. Like, honestly, I don't see many flaws in his game. Maybe he's shooting a little bit, but he can stretch the floor, he can shoot, he can drive. Honestly, I don't really see many flaws with him. I think he's the most NBA-ready ready prospect going into tomorrow's draft. At number 12, the Hornets will be selecting P.J. Washington, power forward. A lot of power forwards going early, or small forwards. A lot of forwards go early in this draft. P.J. Washington, another one of those guys that's not the best shooter, but he'll get down in the paint, score the mid-range. He's the most efficient mid-range shooter I've seen in college basketball this year. He'll also get to the free throw line a lot. He draws a lot of fouls, a very efficient basketball player. Also fantastic on defense, rebounding, all that type of stuff. And that's exactly what the Hornets need. They have some young guys that are fantastic at scoring ball, like Monk, and then um, their small forward, who I'm blanking out on. I can see his face. Hold on. Hornets roster. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna cry when I see this. Okay, this is the roster for the Hornets. Miles Bridges, and if they keep Kemba Walker, it'd just be a great guy for them to rebound and pass it back out or put it up, get a foul. You know, help Kemba out, help the team out, and just keep that youth movement going. They're, like I said, they're one of those teams that are in a tough spot. They have a lot of old, young players. I don't know, some teams, they just need to pick a direction, either try to contend and try to make trades, get acquire assets, and then trade them and flip them, or you just got to start that youth movement. The Hornets are one of those teams that are like kind of stuck in the middle there, and it's hard to see because Kemba Walker is a fantastic point guard, and he's not going to leave. He's one of the most loyal players in the NBA. The Heat have the 13th pick, and they'll be selecting Brandon Clark, power forward. I did have them, I did have the Celtics selecting Brandon Clark, but then I thought about it, and I selected someone else for the Celtics, which we'll see in a second, but Brandon Clark, the Heat kind of need a power forward there, they have a young center with a bam, Kelly Olenek's not going to cut it, he's like 26, 27, he's not that good, he can come off the bench if he wants, that small forward, they don't really have like a small, small forward, because Justice Winslow kind of plays the four and three, and also the one, he played some point guard this year, they have Josh Richardson at shooting guard, and they have Goran Dragic at point guard, Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they suck the point guard based on Goran Dragic is getting older. He might not want to sign whatever his contract stuff. It might be this year in a couple of years. But Goran, like I said, Goran Dragic is getting older, so they could suck the point guard. But I think the better fit for them would be power forward to get that uh, low post defense, like spectacular with Bam and then Brandon Clark. And at 14, my team, the Boston Celtics, will be selecting Tyler Hero. I think this guy has the best shot in the draft this year, either him or Jarrett Culver. And honestly, I can see him being one of the better players in this draft when it's all said and done when everybody in this draft gets retired because 
Honestly, I've never seen a better shot out of someone coming to the NBA. He hit like 85 out of 100 threes when he uh, had his like uh, draft combine the, like that uh, in Boston for the Celtics. So some crazy number like that. I know it was in the 80s, which is just tremendous. Like he, I don't even think Steph Curry did that well. So that's nuts. And I cannot wait to see what Tyler Harrell does in Boston if we do slide, uh, decide to select these guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm gonna say it here, I'm not one. Of the, I'm not a humongous college basketball watcher. I'm more of an NBA watcher. So if the things I said weren't exactly all right, I've been studying this. I I, I watch March Madness. That's about it. I don't really watch the uh, games. So all the stuff I'm talking about here, like knowledge wise, is all off March Madness. I watch every game then. Or if the team didn't make March Madness, I watched them like on YouTube, whatever the players, the highlights and stuff like months ago, and like I would watch a little bit before this. So sorry if all my statements weren't exactly right, but put you put your I want to learn. So put your feelings out in the comments below. Thank you guys so much, and like always, peace.